Hi, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. In this video, I'll be out riding my CCM Spitfire 6 around the Peak District. So I'm doing this as a first ride video because it's the first video that I've done while I've been riding it. I have taken it out a few times already, so some of the observations I'll make, I'm not coming to these after just being on the bike for a few minutes. Uh, I haven't gone a long way on it already, I think just over 100 miles. So this, this will also be a test of you know, coming back onto it after doing a bit of riding. And I'll try and talk you through what I like about the bike and also a few of the little niggles that, that go with a bike that is as impractical as this one. Anyway, uh, here we go and I'll talk you through it. So here we go, the very first thing I have to do before I can get going is to start the ignition, which is this RFID tag. Tap it on the side there and the bike comes to life. There we go, and then I'm going to go onto the cold start handle just come off the throttle and just let that warm up for a moment. Once that's running, I can then release it. Okay, side stand up. So one of my first thoughts, so if I talk about the riding position to begin with, it's fairly upright, or at least it feels fairly upright when you see them. If you sit on a show, it feels quite upright. But the bars are really wide. So the bars feel a bit like, I remember the first time I got on a mountain bike after being on a road bike. I don't know, it's kind of that tracker style, but because they're that wide, you do end up leaning a little bit further forwards than perhaps I, I would have thought I would have done. So on my other naked bikes, I do have a slightly more upright riding position. Now they do offer some slightly narrower and slightly taller bars as an option. So I'll probably see how I get on with these and then maybe switch to those uh, because with the extra width with those bar end mirrors, it suddenly means that you know the bike does feel really wide at the bars um, just from from having this big wide bar where it is and how it's been set up. Having said that, it's a comfortable place to be. Uh, I'm six foot one. Uh, my legs don't feel particularly cramped. The pedals are easy to find. I think if anything, I'm probably going to adjust the uh, brake lever, the brake selector, down very very slightly because as it is currently, I feel like it's a little bit too high for me. Uh, but you know that's an easy thing just to just to slightly tweak and maybe I'll try it with a few different pairs of boots to see how I get on. So the bike itself, uh, it takes a few minutes for it to get up to temperature, uh, but once it's up and running, uh, it does seem to smooth out quite a lot. Uh, it is a little bit noisy from that exhaust, but I think that's part of its charm. And that big old single below maybe 2,200 RPM really does thump away. Above that, it is surprisingly smooth. At the moment I'm doing just over 30 miles an hour just as I come up to the top of the Edel Valley and if you can hear when I just open the throttle it just does just want to go uh, and that thumper really does just kick in. So that's all good I think you know so far so good. Uh, the brakes certainly seem to be strong enough. Uh, my bike has the double discs on the front which is perhaps a little bit unnecessary on a bike that only weighs 140 something kilos but you know, I'm quite heavy when I'm sitting on it and I'm glad that they're there. I certainly feel like I have more than enough braking and it's certainly very progressive. I just give it a bit of a squeeze and uh, yeah, it comes on gradually enough to get enough feel from it, especially when there's cars parked like this up the road. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is the gearbox. Not very exciting, is it? It's only a gearbox. The gearing seems to be just about right for road riding. You know, there's enough pull in first even on a steep hill, which I'm now going down quite a steep hill, uh, down Winnets into Castleton. Um, there's loads of engine braking. I mean, I guess you kind of expect that from a big signal, but right now I'm in third, doing 23 miles an hour, and it's holding me back just enough, just the occasional little squeeze on the brake to slow me down on this hill, which I think is 25%, something like that. So it's pretty steep, and that's in third at those speeds. If I drop it down to second, you know, you really do feel like the, the, you know, you just put the anchors on. So in terms of riding it, you know, on the, on the gearbox, I mean, right now I'm not on the brakes at all, and this is pretty much the steepest part of Winnets, uh, and it's doing a fine job. Also, we'll just give it a bit of a dab of back brake just to keep me running through here. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the handling. Now, this was the bit that worried me, maybe not, maybe worry is the wrong word, but this is the thing I had wondered about the most, because I hadn't actually ridden one of these before I before I bought it. Um, I had a look around and asked a few owners and everyone raved about them, but you know what? If you've paid all this money for a bike, it's quite a big step to say, actually I bought it and I don't really like it or it's not great. So I am 
quite happy to say it is really fun to ride. Um, it doesn't have the tightest turning circle. Uh, I mean, it, despite being quite a small bike, I think the wheelbase is longish. And with that big front wheel and the amount of lock you actually get compared to, certainly compared to my Royal Enfield Scram or to my CRF 300, it's quite a, it's quite a wide turning circle. Uh, but yeah, it's certainly for around country lanes and things like that, it's absolutely fine. And actually, even for manoeuvring it around the garage, it is dead easy just because it's so light. So if you have to go backwards and forwards a few times to get it into the space, really no problem at all. So the next thing I want to talk about is the dash. Not sure how well you can see it here, but it's clear enough. It's not particularly sophisticated. It does have a kind of 1980s LCD feel about it, but it is backlit. You know, when you get used to seeing these fancy TFT screens on a lot of bikes these days, it does seem somewhat dated. Um, what's not so great is the eight indicator lights around the outside because in anything, uh, you know, in, in daylight even, it is quite hard to see them when they're on. Um, they're all off at the moment, if uh, from looking at that you can't see them doing anything. But at some point on the ride I'll be, I'll be signalling and if you see just how bright the indicator lights are, I mean, it's not that bright today, it is overcast today, there is a little bit of sun around. Uh, but yeah, so that's not so great. I mean, it gives you lots of useful information. It does have a gear indicator, which is good. However, I think the main thing that people are probably interested in is what's it like to ride. And around these bends, it is an absolute hoot. I mean, it really is. I mean, I don't think I'd want, want to do a big tour on this. In fact, I certainly wouldn't. I know that people have done long distances on them, but I don't think that's what it's about. Just being able to get on that throttle and hear that big single just blast away underneath you coming up through here coming up from Bradwell it really is just just a hoot and it just tips into these curves and you get on the power and it really is such a raw feeling of riding a motorcycle this is why you know this is why we ride bikes it's for that feeling that you get when you're on something that you're doing something amazing and I'm not even getting that far up the red range because I'm still running this bike in but it really is just it's just a great feeling you know it feels really really planted it feels really really in control I've got the Olin shock at the back and these mar adjustable Marzocchi shocks at the front um, they're not set up for me they just exactly as it came from the factory though I did give them the, my weight uh, I was going to ride it for a few hundred miles and then uh, basically set the suspension up for me maybe even at my at my first service but yeah it's uh, it's great and just the feeling you get from that sound from those twin exhausts when you open up the throttle is just brilliant it really is i just can't stop grinning when i'm riding through and things like these so the sequences of curves as we come through here is just so much fun i don't know how much of that sound actually gets picked up by the mic in my helmet uh, but for even from where i am without my earplugs in with my helmet on i can just feel every revolution as we go around there which is great and yeah and this is fun that all can be had at under 50 miles an hour i mean that was fifth gear accelerating uphill around these bends and it does have a lot of torque from quite low down i mean that's in third from 25 and it's more than happy just to pull out and oops and pull away even when cars are going to pull out on you yeah that's great fun so this is up to 60 now onto the national speed limit section and yeah it's it's okay at these sorts of speeds i'm sure it'll do significantly more than this i'm in about 4,000 revs in sixth gear doing 60 miles an hour and yeah there's lots of breezes you'd expect it is a little bit chilly today here in the peak district i think it's about 15 degrees celsius something like that i don't know what that is in fahrenheit mid 60s maybe and i'm certainly feeling a little bit chilly now so I don't think I'd look to do this all the time. I think that maybe if I'm going to ride it a bit more through the winter or in colder conditions, maybe I'd see if I could get some heated grips that I can put on the bike. You know, something that's a little bit subtle uh, with a built-in uh, switch that doesn't have a big uh, control panel that has to go somewhere. But I think certainly that would be a, a bonus for riding year round. So let me think of a few things that I'm maybe not so keen on. Uh, you know, it's not the most practical bike, I think. That is without a doubt. There's nowhere to put any luggage. Actually, that's not true. You can put a tank bag on and they, they do these straps that will go across the tank. 
uh, with a tiny little pouch that you can put a couple of things in but not, not very much uh, which is fine I did not buy this bike for its load carrying capacity or for its practicality uh, there's no pillion seat so you can't take a pillion it is just one rider only again I have bikes every other bike I own uh, you can take a pillion on so I really don't need it on this bike I'm still not sure about these bar end mirrors I think they look great bar end mirrors always do uh, from in practice they're not the worst ones I've ever come across but I think some of that's just because of how wide the bars are and when I look down they do have that sort of bluish tinge which I think is there to reduce glare but honestly in the UK we're hopeful of ever getting any glare and a lot of the time we have these sort of uh, overcast conditions and when it's like this it, you know it is slightly dimmer I mean they're fine don't get me wrong they're just not they're not amazing and I think they are a little bit form over function I will leave them though because I think they look good and they work well enough uh, what else so the, the side stand I still uh, you know I get why they put it on it's kind of a, a, a throwback to uh, you know, the sort of bikes they used to make uh, that had the suicide side stand that just pops up as soon as you ride the bike there's no kill switch on the side stand either and given where the kill switch is on the dash and that you can't reach it just with your with your right hand it is a little bit inconvenient which is a shame um, so yeah, uh, I think I, I will get used to it. It's just a matter of making sure you get the, the right sequence of feet in there and the brakes to make sure that you have the brakes on when you're uh, killing the engine. Just coming up this little back lane, it's got quite a rough surface, even though it's, uh, uh, you know, it is a paved road, it is quite bumpy. I think things like this are a really good test of the suspension because even though this suspension is fairly firm, uh, you know, it's just picking up every bump really really easily and I'm barely noticing it you know I've had no sort of hard landings and also doesn't feel like way too soft as I'm going around these bends so yeah it's um I mean it, it is quality stuff it's the Marzocchi front end and the Olin's at the back so honestly I'd expect nothing less the only thing I suppose is that as it's not been set up for me maybe the damping could do with a bit of tweaking and also the preload uh, that said uh, there will be time for that so I'll probably do a separate video on my suspension setup as and when I know I mentioned this earlier, but just being on this bike out in this countryside, even though it's turning a little bit chilly, you know, the feel that I get through the brakes, even coming into these sweeping bends, and it's coming on the power afterwards, and hearing that single blast away underneath me is just, it's just great. I, I just, well, this is why I ride motorcycles. It's the feeling that you get makes you all tingly. You just can't stop yourself from smiling. And yeah it's it's what riding bikes is all about you know, the ccm spitfire 6 really is just simple motorcycling but with a little bit extra i think the bikes look stunning i think they sound amazing and i'm delighted to say that they actually ride pretty amazing as well um, not the most practical bike in the world but on roads like this with a 50 and 60 mile an hour speed limit it's just it's just excellent I was having so much fun and if you're looking down you can see that my fuel light has just come on uh, it's a very very faint pink color uh, now it's not bright sunshine and I don't know if you can see that on the GoPro but I think that's quite difficult to see even like this um, I'm just going to pull into the uh, the old smithy here in Moniash and I'll, uh, I'll use my turn signal there so you can see what that's like yeah it's not the it's not the brightest of days really so it's not the brightest of dashes really but it's a nice place to come for a brew that's even with the neutral light on and we're done so I'm about halfway round on my quick run around the Peak District and as you can tell I'm actually having quite a lot of fun. Now I did do one video which was a close look at the bike but I'll just give you a quick look while I'm here uh, just at Monsell Head so you can have another another close look while I'm out and about. I'll try and point out some of the things that I've either slightly changed or where things I think are, are working well or not so well. So as you can see I haven't taken the, uh, the rear hugger off yet. I do have the kit to move that number plate down to the side of the swing arm has it been done as you can see there also another look at that suicide kickstand the one that springs up as soon as you take it off the 
uh, as soon as you upright the bike. Um, it does go up right behind that exhaust, which is a bit annoying that you can't put it down while you're on the bike. Other than that, coming up to the bars, as you can see, I've got one of my GoPro mounts on here. I just put a Ramble mount on the, uh, on the mirror mount in there. Uh, on the other side, uh, what I actually did here was that this was the, the other mirror mount and I just inverted it. So before this bit was actually at the top and I've just put a blanking plug in. It's just to tidy it up really. I'm not quite sure why they don't do that at the factory. Um, if you didn't see my other video and you just want to uh, see a bit more about the bike, as you can see, I'm just a big fan of how everything on here is finished with all the carbon fiber, all the bits and pieces that are all over it. That nice bright yellow Olin's shock uh, with the preload adjuster. And yeah, it's, uh, it's just been a lot of fun uh, to ride today. I've still got a bit of way to go before I get home. But yeah, it's been a, just, just a huge amount of fun. So that's probably enough of looking back at this bike again. I'll get back on the road, give you my final thoughts, and then I'll be back at home. So I think that's me pretty much done for today. I have about a 15 minute ride back home. So I'm just going to make the most of this. Uh, well, the sun's still up, but we're not that far from sunset. So I'm just to ride the rest of these twisties. I've been trying to think really how to describe what it's like to ride one of these. I mean, obviously it's quite exhilarating. It's great fun. You know, despite how they, how they look, they are actually pretty fun to ride. They sound amazing. The brakes are good. The handling is excellent. Um, yeah, the practicality goes out the window. So if you're ever going to have one bike, it ain't going to be one of these. I think they're also quite expensive if you're just looking for a motorbike. My, this was about twice the price of my CRF 300 Rally and not far off three times the price of my Royal Enfield Scram 411. Uh, so yeah, cheap they are not. Having said that, it's half the price of a GS. So, you know, it's not quite at that sort of fully bespoke motorcycle sort of price, but nevertheless, they are a bit of an indulgence. But when you get something like this, which has, you know, it's assembled by hand, uh, which looks the way it does with just the carbon fibre on it and the quality of all the components, then I guess that, that costs. You know, unlike my CRF 300 Rally, I don't really think there's anything I'm going to change on this. Uh, I think I will put the side number plate on and maybe take the rear hugger off. Uh, I had to leave the factory with it on just because it's supposed to have the number plate there, here in the UK. But everything else, you know, particularly the suspension, the engine, you know, it is pretty good exactly as it comes, exactly as it came from the factory by CCM. Which I think, you know, is a, is a testament and it's certainly in that sort of category. My GS was the same, you know, you spend that amount of money on a bike, you don't expect to have to change components. You expect to just be able to ride it and for it to be excellent as it comes. So I think CCM have done a cracking job with this. They do take a while to come if you've ordered one and you're still waiting and you're waiting and you're hoping it's going to come. They do turn up in the end and I think it's worth the wait. You know, I ordered mine in December uh, and I got it in September. And yeah, it's fun. It's a bike I'm going to keep for quite a long time, if not forever. Uh, I'm not sure mine's going to live in the house. I know some people use them as ornaments because they really are works of art. Uh, mine is definitely a bike to be ridden and I'll be riding it around the Peak District. Oh, it's just such a stunning evening. I thought I'd take a little bit of a detour on my way home just to come up here and take a couple of photos. But if you've never ridden in the Peak District, this is pretty much it at its best. Empty roads, just stunning scenery. I know for a lot of people this is what all of England looks like, but not everywhere does. And uh, yeah, it's a fun place to come and try out this bike and just give you a feel for what it's like. So that's me safely back home. Uh, it's been a really fun ride out. Every time I get on this bike, it just can't stop making me smile. So yeah, it's not the most practical bike out there, not by a country mile. And it's not perfect. It does have its uh, little features that um, yeah, some of them are a bit form over function. But having said that, uh, I, yeah, I just love riding it and I'm delighted it goes as well as it does. Uh, my worry with this bike was always that it was gonna look better than it was to ride. Uh, but no, it's, uh, it's great fun. And especially around the Peak District, it's just a hoot on these roads and at these sorts of speeds. And wherever I stop, wherever I go, 
uh, it always attracts attention. Everyone's always got a question about it. So yeah, I'll put a link to CCM in the description. At the moment, I think it's UK only. I think they are looking to get uh, European approval. And I know that some people in the US had also made some inquiries. So yeah, hope this has been interesting and useful. If it has, maybe I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.